Hey, what's up everyone? This is Jeremy and welcome to my video series, How Do You Work This Thing? Pro Tools Edition. Today, we're gonna talk about the mix window. Let's do it. So if you open up your session and you only see the edit window, you can get to your mix window by going up in your toolbar, clicking window, and then mix. I like to use the shortcut command equals. And then let's expand that to be full screen. So here you go, this is your mix window. So if you're familiar with how a mixing board is laid out, you'll have a vague familiarity with actually how this works. Inserts are gonna be up top. Inserts are gonna be where you use your plugins. So delays, compressors, reverbs, anything like that, that's where you're gonna put in your inserts. Sends are gonna be how you route sound out of your track. IO stands for inputs and outputs. This correlates with your recording interface specifically. So if you want to change where you're getting your signal from, you can just click input. For me, it's input six, because that's just where it defaulted to. And then either guitar direct, input two, MKH. So I relabel mine, so they're not going to look like yours. Normally, yours is going to say input one, input two, input three, input four, so on and so forth. Essentially, that just correlates with your recording interface. So the more I.O. you have on your interface, the more options are going to show up in this dialog box. If you just have a two-channel, you'll probably just see input one, input two. And then bus. So bus, you can also route sound out of the track and into any bus that you create. Right here under auto, this is going to say auto read. This is, uh, this is automation. This is going to read your fader movement if you decide to essentially print that on your track. Group. You can group multiple tracks so that if you adjust one fader, it's going to adjust multiple faders within the group. Underneath that is going to be your pan, whether you want to pan it left or right. Now this is a mono track, so if you have a stereo track, it's naturally going to be panned hard left and hard right. But you can manipulate that any way you want. You can put them essentially at 3 o'clock and at, was that, 9 o'clock or 12 o'clock and 12, which is essentially the center. Um, you can manipulate that any way you want. Underneath that is going to be a little I, which is your track input monitoring. This essentially reduces the latency if you were to record a vocal track or a guitar into your interface. This little red button is going to record and enable your track. S is for solo. M is for mute. And then you have your actual fader. Now, if you look on the left-hand side of your mixing board, you're going to see a track section and a group section. Normally, at least for me, it's never active. So when I recall the mix window, it generally looks like this. To find that, you're going to go all the way to the bottom left-hand side of your screen. And there's going to be like a, like a line with an arrow pointing right. I always have to do left, right for that, that's weird. Click that. That's going to open up these options. So from there, this just gives you a global, inter a global overview of all your tracks and an easy way to select them. So if you want to select track two, that's all you have to do. And now track two is selected. Hit guitar. Now that track. Pad G, aux, instrument, master, so on and so forth. Underneath that are going to be your groups. So right now we don't have any groups set up. But let's actually set up a group. I think that's going to be helpful. So to set up a group, you're going to click track one, hold down command, click track two, and then you're going to hit command G. And that's going to set up a group. So let's just call this group guitars. And you can add other tracks in this left-hand window. But on the right are the tracks you actually have selected. So this looks good. The name is going to be Guitars. And right now I have track two and a guitar track in that group. Hit OK. 
And now you'll see down here that a new group has appeared called guitars. So if I were to adjust a fader on one of those tracks within the group, it's gonna globally manipulate the faders in all of the tracks within that group, as you can see here. So I'm manipulating the fader in guitar group, and it's manipulating track two, which is kind of confusing. But that's how you do that. And you can see that up here are gonna be your group names. So over here, it says no group, no group, no group, no group. But over here, it has the name of the group that I just renamed, guitars, which correlates to this. So that's how you add groups. Now, if you want to rename a track, that's really easy too. All you have to do is double click the track and then rename it anything you want. So right now it's called track two. It's in a guitar group. It doesn't really make sense. So let's just call it electric. And this track over here is called guitar, but it's also in a guitar group. So let's get more specific. Let's call this acoustic. Now, if you want to add notes to tracks, that's also pretty helpful. All you have to do is click this little box underneath the name of the track, and you can write in anything you want. So this is an electric guitar. Let's call it um, a PRS Custom 24. An acoustic, we'll call that Taylor 812. CE. So you can just add specific notes and comments to whatever tracks you want. If you really needed to, you can also add what mic you use too. So Taylor 812CE, direct, or you could say 812CE um, for the mic tech C5. Just to help you remember, because sometimes these sessions, um, you'll be working on them for a long time and it's good to reference them later. So that's pretty much it. That's the mix window as an overview. If you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment below and uh, like and subscribe to the channel. All right, see ya.